and welcome to another video. Uh, today I am going to show you how to set up my latest NA10 template, which is um, available on the NA10 template marketplace. Um, I will talk through the workflow, talk through how you can customize it, which you will need to do to make the most of it, and show you how you can set up the chat widget and place it onto um, your website and brand it uh, so it looks like it belongs to you and your, your organization. So the first thing I would like you to do, and I will leave a link in the description, is head over to the um, NA10 template store and click use workflow. And in here you'll be directed to either one of your existing self-hosted instance or cloud versions of NA10, or you can also sign up for a free um, NA10 account as well. And that will ask you to import uh, the workflow. And it's gonna take me over to this view and it's gonna ask you to connect your OpenAI account. You will need an OpenAI API key for this to work. Uh, if you Google that, uh, you will be able to sign up for an account and obtain one from OpenAI and also um, a Microsoft account as well. Um, if you are using a self-hosted version of NA10, the Outlook configuration is a little bit more complex because you have to create an Azure app registration. Um, I do have a video that explains how to do that, which I shall leave in the comments below. So once you've connected both of your accounts, click on continue and you will then be directed into the workflow. Uh, there's a few different elements to, to this workflow. Uh, we start with a chat trigger. In fact, let's just give it a little test and um, I can see, we can see it working. So if I say hi, we can see it's going to go off and use our agent. It's going to interact with OpenAI and it's going to ask how how it can assist. Now this workflow is currently set up to predominantly focus on booking appointments. So it is going to ask um, if you want to book an appointment or if the user wants to book an appointment. It can also answer FAQs and it can send uh, messages via email um, if it can't answer. So yes, I'd like to book um, appointments. Um, I'm going to say 8 a.m. on Monday, please. Now it's used its tool to get some availability and return that information for the agent. And it's correctly stated that the earliest slot is Monday at eight. Uh, so I'm gonna say, yes, please. It's asking for some extra details, uh, what we're gonna be discussing, uh, full name, company, and email address. And you can change what it asks for by editing prompt. Um, but for now, add my details, given up my name and my email address and some information about what I would like to discuss. And it has confirmed and made the appointment. Okay, so let's have a look at the executions and see exactly how that's worked. Um, so first of all, it used the get availability tool, which is an execute sub workflow uh, tool. So if we come into executions, and we have a look at the sub workflow execution, uh, we can see it's came down the availability route We've used a custom HTTP request to reach out to the Microsoft Graph API to return um, events from my calendar. Um, I have put a parameter here, this plus two parameter and this plus 16 parameter. So uh, this means it will always return events that are two days away from now. And the plus 16 will ensure that we always return um, 14 days of availability. So this way people will, you'll always get two days notice and there'll always be a 14 day window time slot. So people can't book without that. Um, we're using a cold node to format these free slots. And this is just ensuring that the information that we return is within the parameters that we've set and within the start and end times uh, that I've defined. So if you want to change the business hours, come to the free time slots code node and change the business hours here. Now, if we have a look at the next meshes that we sent, where it actually booked the appointment, so we've attached a HTTP request tool to the AI agent. If we have a look at this, you can see it's reaching directly out to the Microsoft Graft API to the events endpoint, and it's sending uh, the information that we need here. So there are a couple of placeholders in here that you'll want to change, such as the subject. You'll probably want to change the name and company. Do have a good look over this and make sure you've customized it to your needs. Okay, so if we come back over to the agent and let's have a look at the prompting. So you will need to customize this. It is currently set up um, to me. So you'll want to replace this for your own name and your own company or whoever you want to set it up. And um, give some information about your organization 
it's got some instructions about how to deal with double bookings and how to deal with the um, how to deal with the customer. We're also setting a time zone down here, so you may want to change this to suit you. If you're in the US, you may want to change this from GB to US. Um, and of course, you can add more information here, or you can adapt this prompt to suit your needs. Um, if you wanted to add short FAQs, you could also add them within this as well, just to get yourself started. Um, but the point of this template is really, it's a starting point, right? So you can work with this and you can extend it to suit your own needs. So if you wanted to take advantage of um, a vector store within Superbase, then you can add this to add your own custom knowledge and you can expand on the prompt and you can use it to answer all sorts of questions and, you know, really kind of take it as far as you like. Okay, so in terms of setting up the chat widget, all you need to do is click on the read blog post to take you over to my blog. Do feel free to subscribe. Um, if you scroll down to uh, step one, embedding the chat widget, all you need to do is copy this code and paste it into the header or footer or on your website, wherever your, your website builder allows for custom code injection. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to use code pen, paste the codes in here. You can see the widget pops up at the side. Now, let's say that you want to brand this to your organization. All you need to do is uh, insert your uh, company logo here. Um, find out what the hex codes are for the colors of your business and replace them as you see fit. So we have a primary color and we have a secondary color down here for our gradient on the button. We can choose to position left or right. We have a background color and a font color as well. So I've made a couple of adjustments to this. Make sure that we have the hash in front of that hex color. And there we go. We now have an any 10 branded chat widget okay um if we come back over to our workflow double click on the trigger node and all we need to do is grab the url for the webhook and place it inside there and that is it you now have a working chat widget um that will link up to your na10 instance and it will just work from that point onwards, really, once you've customized everything. And so that is all you need to do. Now, of course, you can take this a lot further. Um, if you have a look at uh, my blog post, uh, there is some information here about um, auto-categorizing emails with NA10. So if you want to learn how to connect Outlook on a self-hosted instance, if you look at this blog post, it will give you instructions on how to do that. Um, there is some information here about customizing the prompt and your business hours. And we've also got some information um, about extending it here as well. So some ideas that you may want to implement in terms of uh, extending the chatbot. But um, yeah, hopefully that's a, that's a really simple setup, a nice easy way for you to get started with adding uh, a custom branded chatbot to a website using NA10. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Please do give it a like and subscribe. Head over to my blog and subscribe there too to be kept up to date uh, when new videos and new posts get released. Thank you.